I'm here in Wellington, Florida, where Printed Farms is building the biggest 3D printed building in the country right now. We're gonna watch their print, do some interviews with their founder, their team, and see how this enormous print goes on their Cobot system. Here with Jim Ritter, CEO of Printed Farms. Jim, it's great to see you again. Pleasure, sir. Thanks for letting me stop by this huge print. You mentioned it's gonna be over 10,000 feet under the roof? Yeah. Including the porches, it's 10,150. That's incredible. And what is this structure going to be? Uh, an equestrian facility, uh, a stable. This is the stable. Um, to our left, we have a, a, our round building we're going to do. is called a horse walker, where the horses exercise. And we have the manure bin, of course. And then we have an office lounge in the front. For the awesome. Farm. So well, four buildings. You guys are going to get started printing today, anytime, any minute now, right? I hope so, yes. I'll follow you with the camera. How tall are these walls? These walls um, from floor height are be 12 feet, but the full wall is 13 feet. Um, and you can see our print is fairly flat compared to a lot of people. We have a flat print. There's still a lot of progress to be done on it, but we innovated the head so we get a fairly flat print. This, this print you're looking at right now is untouched. So it's, it's quite smooth. At the bottom it seems you were able to smooth it out real Good. Yeah, we, we played with it. It was a little labor intensive. We kind of shied away from it. But in the future, um, I think with these machines, you get a robotic arm, we could, we could finish this stuff in a cost-effective way. We're not quite there yet. So this was the first placement of the printer, and since finishing this segment, you've moved the printer? Correct. This is uh, segment one. We're on segment two, which is the most complicated print with all the plumbing, electrical, uh, dividers. It, it, it's the largest print we're doing. It's 20 minutes a layer over there. And this was uh, 15. So it was much more difficult. We do the boxes like everyone. And I don't know if you can see up there, you can see the conduit coming out of the boxes for the electrician. Um, so that when he comes in, he just has to run his wires. And this is an alleyway. To the stables where the actual horses will be and then of course that's a riding ring in progress and they will start running the slurry don't you get it how's it going man good how you doing what are you working on right now uh trying to get the printer calibrated set up ready to go all right i'll try not to distract you maybe i'll catch up with you later okay um, over here is the toilet area we have two of everything and you can see how we've stubbed in the walls and everything. We're ready to drop the vents. Um, they'll come up through the ceiling, through the roof. You've got your stool and everything is set up like a normal build. So this will all be compacted and leveled and, and then poured later. So we'll, we'll pour the floors here after we've printed the walls. Uh, that was a calculated thing. Sometimes you pr pour the slab first. But with this size build, where we have to move the machine multiple times, we decided to pour the slabs later. Um, and you can see in here, which is a laundry room, you know, horses produce a lot of laundry. Um, you have all your outlets for your washing machines, cutouts for your plumbing and everything. And some of these cutouts are larger so that we can access them later. We'll have an entry door in case there's a leak or something water or everything else. We'll do six moves on this print, 10,000 square feet, and then we'll prefab where the machine is sitting now. We'll build these walls, set them in place. Check out their hose management system. This has been a challenge for every single team, especially the teams that print outdoors. They're using an off-road forklift to hoist the hose above the center of the printer so that it can reach all the different angles without hitting a part of the wall that's still wet and risking damaging the freshly printed concrete. This is the loudest part of the job site because you have the mixer pump station over here and a generator over here that are running throughout the entire print. Once it gets going, the material isn't so loud because the aggregate is small, but with larger aggregate, you can get a lot of noise from big pieces hitting into each other and even screeching on metal. This is called a dry run. And essentially, I'm just making sure that uh, basically the building has a coordinate system, printer has a coordinate system. Need to make sure those are matched up, and 
generally you're just adjusting a couple millimeters to make sure you're lined up with your previous day's layer. And will you do a dual bond epoxy or something between the layers? Yeah, so between the dry layer and the first wet layer, they'll use a thin set to, uh, to help. Thin set. This channel is totally self-supported by the Automation Nation and my course, How to 3D Print a House, which teaches you the basics of the different moving pieces on a 3D printed construction job site. The Automation Nation is home to virtual tours of 3D printed buildings, including this one, which you can walk through on Matterport. There's even a free demo at the link. There's also a list of 97 different printer manufacturers, a forum for the community members, and a lot of great stuff. I'm really hoping I can grow this into a big community of automated construction enthusiasts into the future, so I can continue making these videos without relying on external sponsors that want me to sell their products. First couple layers, just trying to get the extrusion to be over extruded there. That's As the material starts to come through, get more consistent, to make the fine tune adjustments. The goal when I'm running the print is just to adjust the extrusion amount to keep it level and consistent. Everything else we try to let the computer run. We'll do some adjusting of the Z height, especially on these first few layers, uh, just to because we have the hard material underneath, we can't print into that. And so for the first few layers, we'll print a little high and then we'll kind of step it down uh, as we go. And then, so over maybe four layers, you'll get to your one inch layer height. Adrian is the most experienced member on their crew. You might remember him from the garage print they did, also nearby. It's loud by the mixer pump system, but we're gonna say hi. Adrian, how's it going, man? Very well. And how's the mixer pump system working today? All good? Sure. Very good. We got a two pump system. Let me show you. That's what you like to see. All right. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. So on these builds, you see the machine starting up and everything. Um, one of the problems that we have in developing this industry is labor and training the labor to work with the machine and integrating that labor force into the machine. We have about seven guys on this print and that's tight. We could really work with uh, eight um, depending on um, how we, we set up the workload and the, the quality of the people you have around you and our biggest problems because we had two of our best workers go out and injure themselves on Thanksgiving and then all of a sudden you're scrambling to find help and train them and this is a problem for 3D printing is who's going to run the machines how they're going to run it and that's what Printed Farms is doing with a, a print like this okay this is how you, you you organize your help this is how you organize your printers this is how you organize your whole job and this is what developers want to hear and so we're working with the local high schools, local community colleges to get the labor groups oriented towards what we want, but we want to do mostly on-the-job training. That's where we know we're going to train the people to do what we want. And there's a learning curve. Even if they're used to construction, they have to integrate with how we do it with the printer. If they want to work here, how do they contact you? They can contact me at info at printedfarms.com give me a holler, get on the job, learn how it really is, because then you'll understand better the, the pros and cons of, of what we're doing. At certain points throughout the print, they used the start-stop function and took the opportunity to clean off the extruder head from concrete that may have been left on it while it was printing. Overall, the day of printing went pretty great. At the end, they did run into a snafu where they had a clog in the mixer pump system and this is something every group is probably familiar with from time to time. Clogs are bound to happen with a fast setting material like this and it's just part of the process learning how to deal with these challenges as they come up and overcome them quickly. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.